Welcome to Build With Rob. It is your host, Rob Deerdeck. You know what it is, the CEO and founder of the Deerdeck Machine. This unique, one-of-a-kind venture creation studio that, believe it or not, believe it or not, systematically fuses art, science, and magic. You know what? How is that possible? It's the only way to manufacture amazing. What? How do you manufacture amazing? You do it by fusing art, science, and magic together. Well, what is amazing? It can be whatever you want it to be. An amazing company, an amazing life, or as I like to say, an amazing existence, because that's really what we're doing down here. We're just sharing philosophies on how to evolve your life into an amazing, harmonious, high-quality, happy existence. Because, boy, ain't that everybody's why. Isn't that why we're doing it? We just want to be happy on a sustained, consistent basis. That is a high-quality life, and frankly, that's living. And again, that's on you to design it if you ever want it. Uh, per usual, wherever you listen to this show, appreciate you. If you're looking at my face in this beautiful studio, in this Skyrise office in Beverly Hills. Thank you for watching. If you're listening, uh, thank you for listening. So comment, like, subscribe, share. Tell your friends about it. Tell them how much you're learning, how much you enjoy it, how you're just trying to evolve into a machine mindset like your boy, Robbie D. Um, really, really do appreciate it. And, of course, if you feel compelled, uh, become a machinist. You know, if you want to be on the show, we invite you to come be on the show. Uh, you want to support our foundation, the Do or Die or Visionary Foundation, feel free to donate. All of this can happen at Uh, You know, we love everybody who interacts with everything that we do. Truly, truly appreciate all of you. Um, you know, I love all aspects of this. This is me and my, uh, you know, flow state. My zone of genius is really talking about integrated life and business vision. Uh, today we have a great guest. I mean, this guy is, is I mean, die hard, die hard. It, it, it feels so good to me to have somebody on like this show who not only is, is, you know, committed to listening to the show and ultimately a true entrepreneur, but someone that's also deep into, to realizing their version of like my machine mindset where he has his own rhythm of existence and tracks his own time and, and does his own qualitative and quantitative, uh, data, uh, he, he's an amazing guest. He has a really cool concept that, that I really tried to help shape into um, an idea that I'll just tease you with. Uh, tropical punk. Tropical punk. Ooh, ooh. When you hear it, it just feels special, you know. So, uh, but before we get into that, you know, I, you know it's, it's just even speaking to another person that has um, really use the machine mindset and, and really using sort of tracking and, and, and different aspects of your life to gather insight to make your, your life best, better. Um, and, and one thing that I need people to understand is you can become incredibly disciplined if you gamify your discipline. If you make being disciplined fun rather than hard, and that the more you do it, the more exciting it gets, the better results you get, the more motivated you are, and ultimately, um, you're trying to beat your own scores and your best records and your best numbers. If you can turn it into a game against yourself, you are going to make discipline way more fun. You know, and, and for me, I am I I didn't fully understand the power of gamifying discipline until I got um way more consistent at, at tracking sort of the core um sort of health balance things that I do in my life right and and to me um you know a lot of people look at discipline as like oh it's willpower you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's, and, and to me, when I think about you looking at discipline, at like willpower, it's like, I'm going to use adrenaline to work out. You know what I mean? I got to get adrenaline to be able to get this workout in, you know, you know what I'm saying? You can't work out on adrenaline. It's not sustainable the same way that like using willpower, uh, to be disciplined, uh, is not sustainable. You know what I mean? Like you, you really have to design a system 
um, you've got to automate that system, optimize that system, and ultimately measure that system. You know, and and that's when you end up in this state of quantified discipline where you can actually put a number and uh, put a measurement to the things that you know you have to do, the habits that you need to be more consistent at in order to get the results of the higher quality life um, that you are thinking about, right, that, that you really want. And here's the thing, you know, it's like a momentum pendulum almost, right, where like, you know, the, the more you are disciplined and do it more consistently, it becomes more natural and then eventually it flips, Eventually it flips. It goes the other way where it's not like, oh, you have to get yourself to do it. Um, you actually now not doing it. You feel like things are off or weird. Like, I, oh, my God, I'm not in the gym. Like, what am I like? OK, no, move that. I need to get in the gym. It's like that. That's the beauty of when you get habits to a certain stage or you get your discipline to a certain stage. But I'm suggesting you quantify it and gamify it. Quantify and gamify your discipline, and and let me let me give you some examples at least from 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 my world, and and really kind of kind of how I how I started to do it right because I started tracking like like every single day did I get up at five did I brain train did I meditate did I work out um, did I eat clean and did I not drink right and so I would put it in my calendar and I would just say. You know, since it's, you know, this is 100% quantitative, meaning there is just yes or no, did you do it? And then the beauty of that is, is like that ends up being a percentage on a monthly basis. Then uh, that ends up being an average percentage on a yearly basis. And for me, you know, even though I tracked all of this, it wasn't till I started adding it up and looking at it on a monthly basis did it turn into like this game for me? And, and this game, trust me, is a double-edged sword, right? Because, you know, when I started um, really tracking my discipline in 2020, where I, I, 2020, I've been tracking all of these different measurements and qualitative and quantitative data for years, but it wasn't until 2020 did I do an entire year. Um, it, it took me getting disciplined to just tracking it uh, to the point where I created the habit to do it every single day, and I've never missed a day since, right? But this is what it looked like in, in 2020. In, in January, I got up at 5 a.m., 90%, brain trained 90%, meditated 81% of the time, worked out 81% of the time, diet clean 81% of the time, but I was, I had a drink 90% of the month. I only did not drink 10%. And that gave me a total average score of 72%. And boy, that was like killing the game, killing the game. I started 2020 off fully focused. 90% of the time I got up at, at five, 90% meditation, 81% in the gym, clean diet, 81, but I drank a lot. I drank a lot. And, and when I say drink, I had one glass, but still, I mean, um, weak, weak discipline, right? And then as you look at my years now, February, now I'm, now I'm heading down the line. 66% was my average 52% in, in March, uh, 51% in April, 63%, 66%, 50%, 40%, 44%, 46%. And, and check this out. In November, I was like, you got to get focused. You're just, you're not even committed. Look at these numbers. Like last month, you brain trained 3% of the time. You peaked at, at, at 90. You just did 3% of the time. And I'm looking at this number, and this is where the double-edged sword is. Now I'm looking at it like, oh, God, you've gamified it, and you've quantified it, and now you look at it, and you're, you're losing the game. You're losing the game. And what did I do? I overcorrected in November, 9,300% brain train, 97% meditation, 97% working out, 80% um, clean diet, uh, 
of not drinking for a total of 93% in November of 2020. Woo! Record numbers. Record numbers. Going into December, fell right off, ended up at 46%. And then the beauty of it is when you look at these percentages across the year and then go up to the quantitative numbers of how I'm judging how I feel about my life, work, and health, it was so clear to me that whenever I had much higher consistency numbers in this health balance, that I was living a happier, higher quality of life based off of how I was rating my life, work, and health zero to 10. So at the end of 2020, I told myself, because I ended up with an average on the year of 57% of the time did I do all six of those things. Um, specifically, 91% getting up at 5 a.m. was the anchor of that, that 57% because how often did I brain train in the year? 39%. How often did I meditate in the year? 61%. How often did I work out? 48 How often did I eat clean? 55 How often did I drink? 60% of the year I drank. Um, with an average of 57, but boy, man, it, it, I now have it in numbers. And now the game was, okay, you know, if you average 80% on all of those core six, that it's going to drive up the quality of your life. So now it put me in this incredibly unique, motivated state because I now had a year of like looking at how committed I was. And now I had a marker, not only a month over month marker and in these different aspects, but I now like had a clear um, goal that, that I could now turn to that I knew that would affect the quality of my life and, and something that I now gamified and committed to, I'm going to have 80% discipline for the year. 2021, let's get into the numbers. In January, 97%. In February, 96%. In f- March, 78, 82, 80, 83 88, 92, 91, 90, 81. I averaged the year of 2021 at 88%. 98% getting up at 5. 95% brain training. 96% meditating. um, 84% in the gym. 81% clean diet. And I was sober now, no drinking, 73% of the year. And so by doing it and seeing it, it motivated it. It gamified it for me. And then I turned it into beating my own numbers and it changed my life. I used gamified discipline to truly turn these six core things into a way of life, which in turn changed the quality of my life and elevated my entire existence to a level that I could have never imagined through gamified discipline. And, and look, I, am, I, I say to each and every one of you, I'm not saying you got to get as extreme as I did and commit to these core six and track it at this level. But if you track uh, three or four different things that you know will better your life and then you commit to trying to hit a percentage of doing them on a monthly basis, it will create motivation and drive inside you to remain consistent until you swing past the momentum pendulum and you now will do this as a way of life and in evolve and grow your entire quality of life to a sustained permanent state because you gamified your discipline. Okay, look, uh, you know what it is. Um, another great show, another great entrepreneur. I think you guys are really going to, uh, really enjoy this conversation because, because it's a fun one. Let's, let's jump into it. Brent Ramos. Welcome to build with Rob. How are you, my friend? Good, man. Living the dream. Happy to be here. 
Man, it's great to have you here. Obviously, we're kindred spirits, even though we've never met. Even though we've never met, man, because, uh, you know, uh, someone sending in a video to be a, a part of the Deer Deck Machine, I mean, we're talking you had citrine, you got your own rhythm of existence, you know what I mean? You're you're laying in all aspects of the method. I I am humbled and honored by your video and and very thankful that we get a chance to connect here on this show you know what i'm saying so thank you thank you for being a guest man so look uh hit me with a vision for the koa house and 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 what it is as a business and concept and overall vision yeah yeah absolutely so Koa House is the world's very first uh hawaiian infused action spa and clean skincare product brand and by action spa, what I mean is as, as seasoned or dyers in the industry of health and wellness, we realized that there's two sides of the same coin that everyone carried, health, wellness, gym, spa, and they were never really united. So the consumer experience was always kind of not that great. And the ones that were trying to do it never really were able to unify that path. So we wanted to come in, attack that, that white space and see if we could do it. Um, and of course, wrap it around in this super awesome brand that everyone could love. Um, so that was kind of that that first step. We also noticed that um, people didn't really like the gym aspect so much. So we wanted to try to make it as comfortable as possible to feel like a spa as opposed to a gym um, in that, in the, in the, wrapped up in that entire experience. Now, and, yeah, go and, ahead. And, and tell me, what what is the gym experience, right? Because it wasn't entirely clear to me. Like, it made sense to me that, like, hey, we have a spa here, although I, I wasn't an entirely... Um, um, yeah, it wasn't entirely, it was a traditional sort of massage, right? Like, and then, and I, and I got sort of the products that sort of support the skincare side of it, but I wasn't, I, I knew there was a martial art, uh, martial arts aspect to the gym side, but explain to me how the action gym side of it connects with the concept. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good question. And the reason why we, we chose to kind of go with that route for it was because there was something about the martial arts component to it that one people loved, it's calorie shredding. So it gives people results really quick. We also infuse it with yoga and a little bit of Tai Chi as well in there to keep it, keep it soft. Um, but I, ideally what it does is it helps to spark action and to take action as opposed to maybe just sitting on a treadmill. You know what I'm saying? So there's that community-based aspect to it that helps spark action. And this is something that we always realized that was lacking on the spa side is people would be on the table, but they never really take that next step to actually be healthy themselves. So we took that side to it um, to, to kind of help, help hopefully get that spark. Spark yeah, and, and then what is that? That's ultimately like like similar to sort of a CrossFit class, but it's like a combination of like Tai Chi and kicks and a and a punching bag, and then stretches. Like is that? And it's like sort of like a you know twenty people in a class, like twenty dollars a class, like forty minute class type setup. Yeah, exactly. So we we kind of took the best hits that's out there uh, that that offer results. So uh, kickboxing. Uh, tai Chi for for the little softer aspect, and then yoga, drop in base about 20, uh, 20 people per class, um, and then we try to keep it drop in base or or per class base with packages to support, um, and then of course we have the spa side as well where we kind of do the same model with with the massages. And then do people ever like like, um, you know, I'm assuming the facility does it can't support like working out, then taking a shower and then getting a massage or like do you do it all in one sort of workout massage whole wellness package as well? Yeah. So we don't have the the, the facility for, for showers or anything like that. We try to keep it pr- pretty much feeling like, like a boutique. Yeah, aspect of it rather than this big center, um, because that's kind of what we found that people enjoy as well. This movement towards boutique and micro gyms for experiences that they can kind of curate for themselves. So we don't have the facility for that. Um, So it's just on table massage. um, And then once massage is done, no facilities for showers or anything like that. Yeah. And and, and hit hit me with 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 your your business question, because I'd love to kind of get into to, you know, ultimately why you sent the video in and and you're sort of um, getting some insight into into your uh, actual question. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this is a really interesting one. So we we found traction uh, on year one, which I call kind of call our proof of concept. We're getting ready to launch the product side of it, which is the lotions. Um, that we're getting really excited for, but kind of in that process, we're now looking to scale because we feel confident. So of course we're looking into um, fundraising. And you know, I, I was watching the the video with Brian Atlas, and it was just hitting so close to home because as as new to that kind of aspect of this, we were kind of really it's like a wild west show. 
<laughs> as we yeah. stepped into it. So watching that video gave us so much insight. I also uh, watched some uh, insights from Bill Glazer uh, to also kind of uh, help us kind of think about how to attack it. So my question for you is, um, what are you seeing in the field as far as uh, fundraising? What kind of tactics are you seeing being utilized? Um, overall, what's your opinion on the best way, especially for seed rounds, to be able to go in and start attacking that? Yeah, and and, and look, I think um, it just is what it is. Like the venture world is the wild, wild west. You know, it has a lot of layers, right? It's high net worth individuals to and to, that are just gunslingers. Uh, to family offices, to venture funds who are essentially now managing other people's money um, and trying to make high-risk bets that have big 10, 20, 30, 100x returns. But but make no mistake, it's everybody's looking for a return, right? And, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I say this all the time, but when you are looking for investment capital— the people that will invest in you are looking for a return and people uh, who are looking for a return love clarity. They love like the concept that they fully understand. Then it connects to them. Then the concept, the need for it, it's solving a problem is believable to them. Then they tie that to uh, the economics and then the believability of the strength of the economics and the operator and founder to realize the potential of those economics. And then they believe there is a liquidity event and a clear um, acquirer for this opportunity. That's when they get excited and will invest, right? And so, you know, I think when, when I think about you, and sort of what you've created and your sort of experience, right? And, and, and you know, based off of the detailed video that you uh, sent us, which I have the utmost appreciation for, uh, and, and really getting to know you and understanding and, and your sort of evolution and, and what has kind of led you here. So I, I want you to kind of hear like what I see as it relates to where you might be missing in that, right? And so to me, you know, it, it gets a little confusing, right? Because you you end up telling a lot of these stories, right? It's like, oh, it's experiential, like, you know, um, you know, experiential retail is like this new wave, like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we're gonna, we're gonna do an action um, spa, you know, okay, what's an action spa? Oh, it's like, that's because like, it's, you are doing martial arts in it. Like, oh, so it's a workout. It's a gym. Oh yeah. It's a boot. It's a micro gym. It's a new, like, and then, but it's a spa. And then we have these amazing organic, like Hawaiian sourced, like farm sourced, high quality, like, like skin products, like that, that we use in our spa. Like, okay, what happens is it ends up being, like you're, we're telling all of these different sort of things, right? And and so it's like, okay, what is the model um, that we're we're chasing here, right? Like, so is it a soul cycle model, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is it a a a traditional sort of spa model, right? Like, um, like is it going to scale into hotels? Is it is it scale in through uh, its own shops, right? Like, there's all these different sort of aspects of it, at least. When I'm like, like think about it, then you throw in this Hawaiian inspired, like, like as being like this entirely other version of it, like that it now it's like, well, how does the Hawaiian inspired connect to the martial arts side of it? Mm. Like, and then I get that there's a pretty clean connection to ho all the Hawaiian side as it relates to the treatments as their traditional Hawaiian treatments and the products. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of clean in there. So if that's what what my mind sees as as um, someone that 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 lives in in the venture side of things. Here's how I see like the this really special sort of way to, to like that I thought was really interesting and unique to kind of tie it together. Right. And to me, like I love this idea of like your logo and vibe and product is tropical punk. <laughs> thank you thank you You know what i'm saying because tropical yeah, yeah. punk is white space tropical right. punk does not exist you know what i'm saying and like yeah. man it just it hit me so hard right so then like now like you know because when i think about like like 
branding and how things sort of feel like when it when when you can you can create a white space brand by just positioning it in a unique way. And so to me, when I thought about the tropical punk spa, like now it was it became really tight. Then it was like mm. you could begin to see what like tropical punk felt like in you know, the way you presented your brand and like doing sort of the traditional, um, you know, tropical Hawaiian design art, but in black and white with a little bit of edge and all this other, it began to have this feeling. And then like the tropical punk wellness spa, like Nike, like lose the attitude at the door. Like there's, you know, like there's, there's, there's this tighter feeling. And then if it is like, Hey, we're going to use our spa for customer acquisition and experience in order to sell our products. And, um, you know, every time we give a massage our we're looking at it as, as essentially customer acquisition. So if our stores, uh, break even the products they buy is where our profitability is going to be. And now you tighten it up to this like much sort of tighter story that's that's easier to tell. And then when you build sort of the, the economic side of it, like you you have two strengths, right? That is both in the brand building, the community building, the unique point of view. And then now you have tying it back to this farm sourced Hawaiian clean ingredients that connect to the name, to the concept, only you've now literally done a one of one brand with that positioning, you know? So, right. I, you know, I only say that because you're thinking about it the right way. You're thinking about it from the flywheel perspective, like, okay, this experience in this spa uh, and Jim becomes this sort of flywheel to drive it. And eventually we can, um, sell directly through our retail and direct to consumer. It, it's just when it goes to the, like the martial arts gym side and then, um, you know, then, then dumping into really Hawaiian. Right. Mm. But then the packaging is tropical punk. Right. So you, right, you're, right, you're, right. You're, everything rather than like, man, if the whole vibe was tropical punk, like now it feels like, you know, it's, it's just super unique to me. And then you can build, like you're positioning around that, then deliver on the economics. Then I think you got to really go out and, you know, you, you did great on laying out, hey, this is what we think that each retail store could do. And then what our product consumer products could do. And here's what we think this would trade at. But but really, you got to go out and identify like the handful of people that would buy it and why they would buy it um, and and get that get clarity on, on that's because that's, what's going to like be the, the thing that sells it. Right. Cause you're going to be like, right. here's the differentiation. This is the quality of the products. Here's the position. This is the experience. This is the unit economics. This is how it can scale and who, this is, who's going to buy it. You know what I mean? I just think like you're right on the edge of, of having all of that really tight. And it's almost like you're just telling one too many stories um, in mixing one too many, like really just that the, the gym side of it is almost one too many. And it's not a big deal if you keep the gym, um, as it relates to like, you know, for the current one you have as part of the, your sust creating sustainability, like those classes might, might really matter. Uh, but I would even shape those into like fa falling in line with that same sort of feeling of like, you know, tropical punk, you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's like, you know, just really from, from me, like, I just, I can see when, like the through line in ideas, uh, so often, especially the kind that get me excited. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, man, and, and like, when you think of Travis Barker on vacation with like a lay, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you really like, man, like you think of Travis Barker on the beach, like, you know, uh, it, you know, proposing to Courtney, you know what I mean? It's like, there it is. You know what I mean? Like, I just think there's, that's definitely something, um, for, for you to consider. Okay. Look, man, hit me, uh, with that life question, man. I love, I love how deep into the ROE lifestyle style you are. So I'd love to kind of, <laughs> kind of hear about your, your, your life question. Well, first hit me with your life vision, man. Cause I really think it, you've definitely put some thought into to how you want to evolve and what you're trying to create. So tell me, tell me, tell me what what your ideal life would look like. 
Yeah, no, um, ideal life is it's actually very similar to, to the path I've seen the machine take, which is I would love to eventually have a magnum opus of an exit um, and then spend the rest of my life really looking at uh, how to give back in, in, in the form of foundations and supporting other entrepreneurs. Um, so that, that's kind of it. And obviously never stop working because when you do what you love every day, every day is vacation. Right? So that's kind of the, the whole aspect of it. And I think that kind of ties into the question I have for you on, uh, as it regards to life, because as you know, I'm a huge fan of the rhythm of existence. I'm pretty sure I was probably one of the first full adopter champions of that thing. And uh, I love it. I use it every day. So my, my question though, that's, as that's kind of come up as I've been using it is, what are your thoughts on um, how it relates to like other people in your family or even in your business? Like, can you, do you see a pathway to be able to utilize that same methodology outside of just yourself? Uh, Cause that's kind of where, I start to see the tug and pull is where I'm locked into this structure now and it's beautiful, but then the people that clo are close to me or that I work with um, are, are outside of it. So I'm just wondering if there's, do you see a pathway to kind of broaden that out? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I think that's the, you know, it, you know, my wife doesn't use one, uh, but she's slowly understanding automation and systems. Right. And, mm. and which I think has been, um, you know, I'm not going to force the benefits of qualitative data and tracking your time. And, you know, she already kind of lives inside the system and she sees the benefits of it. And especially in, in autom automation and optimization where we've just automated so like many aspects of our lives, including, you know, um, the way that we spend time together and, the amount of things that we we do way beyond what you would expect from, you know, our family meetings to our biweekly um, um, uh, meeting with the therapist to like my emails every day to her and asking her how she feels about our relationship zero to 10. And and then our, you know, Wednesday breakfast date and Thursday night movie night and Friday night sushi night and all, how we built in this. She's seen the effect of it. So she's adopting it. And, and to me, you know, I'm, I, I want a world where everybody sees the benefits, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I appreciate someone like you adopting it and, and saying, Hey, I'm a 30, 30, 30, 10 guy. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, Hashtag that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With the idea of like 30% sleeping, 30% family, 30% work and 10% on my health. Right. Like I, it meant so much to me, right? Because I, I really believe that that's how you find harmony and how you find like really sustained energy and a higher level of success long term if you begin to get extraordinarily efficient inside that structure, especially that 30, 30, 30, 10 squad, you know what I mean? I, is really matters, you know? And, and for me, long term, I want to create a a very user friendly amazing software that there's many different levels of how you could approach uh, mm. learning to do this yourself without it being so heavy cuz so i think right now it's a lot of work you know there's i didn't really create a shareable tool people listen uh, i use i track it all in in my regular google calendar and excel files and had people write scripts and all this stuff in order to pop it into data studio and look at it all in all this the same way but that's a heavy lift you know and I, and i want to create it in a way to where it becomes super intuitive and really easy. And then you can quickly see the benefits of mastering time, energy, and capacity and looking at all the places that you can begin to automate. Because once you automate, you can begin to optimize and optimize is where you can begin to be extraordinarily efficient and evolve at a rapid pace and create a truly extraordinary life in a relatively short amount of time once you get all that harmony in all these core systems. So... It's something I certainly want to bring alive um, for for everybody, for yourself, for your wife and kids and for people that work for you, for, for everyone that works for me. And then eventually uh, everyone that works for all the companies I build with and the founders and then eventually everybody to live this, you know, deeply harmonious, high quality existence by design, you know, is is the vision that I have. So. Uh, I believe in it, and as you know, it's it's one of those things that until there is that tool, it's probably going to be, be hard to get the 
the masses to adopt. But listen to me. I appreciate you for adopting it and and staying uh, committed to it. And I, I really think if you... Uh, continue to 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 do it and seek clarity and and continue to optimize and evolve your goals and plans and and get sharper and sharper that you will have that magnum opus and and achieve all the things that you hope to achieve so i appreciate you again sending in the video and having the detail uh that you did and i wish you the best of luck with everything you're doing man absolutely man thank you rob okay be good man oh, i can't tell you how much that warms my heart um, you know, just somebody committing, uh, you know, to, to the rhythm of existence and even the concept of tracking everything. I just absolutely love it. I love the idea of the, the 30, 30, 30, 10 club. Uh, that really is, uh, a lifestyle. You sleep 30, uh, you know, you work 30, you hang with your family, friends and adventure for 30, you spend 10% on your life. It really is true baseline harmonious happiness exists within that time structure uh, and I'm glad to see other people uh, embracing it and trying to do their own version of it uh, and hopefully uh, all you give it a shot give it a shot find that balance find that harmony it's in you gamify your discipline get committed get to the other side and, and, and feel what it feels like to have a harmonious happy existence um, thank you as always for listening uh, again, like, subscribe, comment, you know, head over to DeerDeckMachine.com, join us, become a machinist, pitch yourself to be on the show. Uh, if you feel compelled, uh, donate to our Do or Die or Visionary Foundation. Uh, support the cause as we continue to push this idea of being the visionary of your life. Design your life and business and career, integrate them both and expand and evolve into an extraordinary existence that you know you are capable of creating because you have the ability to look out into the future. You know that you believe in your ability to create a plan to get to that future. And you know you got the heart to put in the work to get there. Until next time, see it, believe it, do it.